Hello, I'm the Red Monk, and uh, I got my Detroit sectional, and I got my logbook, and I can tell you that chemtrails are not real, and it's the cringiest thing, and I don't know why people give it the time of day when it's such common sense that they're not true. The simplest way to disprove it is in the weather and the atmosphere. Now, my professor last semester said everyone passed aviation meteorology with a breeze until like 2010 because people stopped watching the weather channel in the morning when they could just check their phones. I think people are more quick to believe chemtrails when they don't know how these little streaks in the sky from airplanes are formed. It's basic meteorology. And chemtrails have thought to existed for many years before that. A lot of people, here in America at least, really don't know how small we are and our little doings are, even less so if that one doesn't understand the atmosphere. If you didn't already know, clouds form whenever convective activity occurs. Convective activity is vertical movement in the atmosphere. Warmer than surrounding air will move upwards, colder than surrounding air pushes downwards. We call these air masses with different temperatures warm and cold fronts. You can see clouds as evidence this vertical movement has occurred. So when you go up, the colder it gets. Uh, you see this chart? As the altitude increases, the temperature decreases. And when an airliner's engine creates exhaust, that's really hot air. And it's harder than the surrounding air. This temperature difference is especially something at higher altitudes. So it's sort of like a mini warm front. The condensation from the airplane's exhaust forms contrails, but instead of being in the shape of a giant bubble of air, the exhaust is in the shape of a cylinder coming from the back of the engines. You can see stratus clouds from a warm front. Same deal, and these clouds definitely have the same appearance. Uh, so that's it. That's where those little cloud streaks come from. And you know, if those clouds would be a chemical cloud, they would be smaller than the plane, since it's difficult to carry more of the plane's size of chemicals, right? And then there's the whole issue of size. You know, the atmosphere is big. Right now, where I live, the tropopause, the lowest layer of the atmosphere, is about 39,000 feet above sea level. The Airbus A380, a very large commercial airliner has a wingspan of 262 feet. It's like trying to fill your room with ant farts. All that shit, even from a huge ass plane, gets immediately dispersed. Ugh, I just inhaled four molecules of the chemical. And another thing I hear is that they mix this weird ass chemical that mind controls us and makes us infertile into the gasoline. That's really the only way they could hide it from all pilots, mechanics, and the unwashed masses. But that's cut by Akram's, or whatever his name is, his razor. I'm not really by, because the whole aviation industry is based off of gas. Like 70%, you know, give or take, of the cost of a plane ticket is for the gasoline. And I don't really see the companies willing to make such a loss on the most expensive part of flying then they can just use pure gas and undercut the competition for longer flights and better engine performance. And this is ignoring the fact that planes need gas, so that's even less chemicals. And an entire fleet, all filled to the max gross weight with this chemical, is still so little compared to our atmosphere. <laughs> chemicals being dropped from planes is something that has been done before. It's not like a plane 35,000 feet above dropping chemicals over a whole state, but more like dropping chemicals at a lower altitude to kill a field of crops as a war tactic. Now one thing that can't make me feel more proud as an American is the Vietnam War. The American army dropped this chemical called Agent Orange as a war tactic. And this Asian orange is a herbicide that kills animals, plants, and causes all kinds of diseases. At the airport where I'm learning to fly, 
they actually have a restored model of the war pig. This actual plane served in the Vietnam War, and the type of aircraft was used to dump Agent Orange onto Vietnam. It's likely that this plane could have dumped Agent Orange in its youthful years. But the horrendousness and damage of the Vietnam War aside, you can see when the helicopters are dropping chemicals, they are close to the ground and soaking the forest below. That's because when chemicals are dropped from an aircraft, it has to densely cover the ground for the chemicals to have its effect. Airplanes in class alpha airspace are a little too high up. The chemical dropping plane needs to be close to the ground and needs to be dropping a visually apparent amount of chemicals to have a dense enough spread to cause any effect. But chemtrails are fake, all right? That's, that's true. But the one conspiracy theory I believe is the earth being flat. That's true, and that's actually how they taught us the Earth looks like in school. 